I'm going to try to explain to you in this video where the problems lie with the splines on the crankshaft on this SNS engine. It's my opinion that splines should never be made to be a tight fit because they are almost impossible to gauge correctly at manufacture and therefore you cannot guarantee that the sizes you're getting are going to fit all the items that are provided to go on that shaft. One of the things that goes on that shaft is my alloy steel hub which as you can see has splines in it and there's been so much difficulty in getting these things fitted properly that in recent months I've been telling people that I'm not prepared to supply a splined hub other than if it is fitted by me here in my workshop. Now that doesn't help people who live in other countries, in the States or Sweden or wherever. So I'm going to try with this video to explain what's what. Splines are normally used in gearboxes and are a loose sliding fit. So all you have to do when you gauge it, when, when it's going through the inspection department in the factory, in, in other words, is to make sure that the shaft is not too big and the hub is not too small. The situation we have on this one is that it is a tight fit and if it's not sufficiently tight it will rattle loose and I've had quite a few failures from trying to supply an item which will fit straight off the shelf. So I've had to stop doing that and what I supply now is a hub which is a tight fit on there and needs to be fitted correctly and if your shaft is undersized because it's already had some failure, some wear from the original coming loose or whatever, I supply undersized hubs which again have to be hand fitted and by fitted we don't just mean taking something off the shelf and installing it, what we mean is taking an item on the shelf that won't go on and you then have to file away some of the material until it does go on, until it goes on correctly. Now I have made up a wooden model in order to demonstrate how this thing has to be done and I'm going to take this out of the vise now, put the wooden model in and I will try and show you how that fitting has to be observed. Okay so what I've got for you here is a wooden representation of what's inside this hub. You can imagine I hope that this is a curved inner part of that hub and we've got a couple of splines. Now the first thing you have to know is that within this assembly because there are 10 splines we have 40 different areas of contact. On each spline we have the major sorry the major diameter which we will see down here the minor diameter and there are 10 of each so there's 20 faces which have to make contact and we have the left flank and the right flank of each spline that makes another 20. Now the major and minor diameters are not so important as long as one or other of them is a good sliding fit that will ensure that the hub of the centre coupling runs true. Concentricity is what we're looking for. And the hubs I supply fit usually with just a touch on both of those. The important thing is to get these side faces or flanks of the splines touching and both sides touching. Now if I supply a standard hub and your splines on the, your crankshaft are slightly worn 
then you won't get a good enough fit on those sides and the thing will fail. The only way to ensure that this is correct is to hand fit the thing, which means first of all, putting your new hub onto the splines and just getting the first little bit to go over. And that may involve using a hide mallet to, to drive it on. And you will see here and here a little shiny area where the spline in the shaft has forced its way in and the normally matte grey surface has become shiny. If it's then difficult to get on any further, you need to take a file to the sides of those, the sort of file in question is one like this, which you can use just to carefully remove a little material on either side. Now, if you've got contact here and here, then to get it to go on further, don't file away those shiny areas. You don't want to make them loose. What you need to do is file a little bit further back here and here and then try it on the shaft again ensuring that these sides here are still in contact and that the area you filed becomes polished or burnished by the fitting onto the crankshaft. You then gradually work your way back until the thing goes on with the exception of the last five millimetres. Having got that last, up to that last five millimetres, you can then pull it on the final time and just pull this last five millimetres on really tight and that will ensure that the thing is there permanently. You will then be able to take it off at times in future. You'll have to pull it off with a puller, but when you do take it off, it will go back on again later. Let's talk now about the hub itself. The hub fits into the centre coupling and there is a plane diameter in the back and I don't know if you can see but this hub has been pulled on and off and there are some little marks where it travelled over the ends of the splines and that's how it should be. I make this diameter in here one and a quarter inches and sometimes the shaft on your crankshaft has been left a little bit bigger. If you find great difficulty pulling this on and when you look in the back you see that the splines are starting to cut into the surface of this, I'm afraid you have no alternative but to either do it yourself or find someone who's got a lathe and machine maybe a few thou out of there. You need somebody who's capable of measuring it, which is very difficult because the shaft is inside the crankcase, so you can't get a micrometer to it. You might just do it by trial and error machine a few thou out, try it again until you get a nice sliding fit on there. Nothing I can do to help you with that because I've got no control over what size your shafts are. The other end is splined, and when you press it on, first of all, you need to look right down the back of those splines. I'm sure you can't see very well on, on this video camera. But right down at the back in there, you will see the first shiny marks appearing, like I showed you on the wooden model. And you can then start to file through the hole using that flat file in there. You can file through there and remove small amounts of material each time putting the hub back on again, pulling it off again, checking to make sure. But the most important thing is that you must have good contact between the sides or the flanks of those splines and the sides or flanks of the splines on the crankshaft. Let's have a look now at the crankshaft and how to measure it. 
Right, now the first thing you're going to have to do before you can order one of my hubs is to measure those splines. Now, the measurement we need is the measurement, and I've written it on that crank there to remind you, the ideal size, the new size, is 4.41 millimetres. And it's measured with a micrometer across the width of that spline there. And you can see, I don't know if you can read the marks here, but this one is 4.37. If we go right up at the back where there is no contact, we can see we're on 4.4. That's almost brand new. On this spline, we've got 4.39. So this one's a little bit undersized. We measure it there. We're down to 4.39 again in the middle. And uh, what I need is for you to check all of these. That one's 4.41, that's top notch. 4.4 at the back. 4.4. There we go. 4.4, 4.395 perhaps there. Now we need those to be 4.41 and I can supply you with a standard hub which when you fit it on will show shiny marks along the sides where it's rubbed on those splines and it will be a good fit. If your shaft like this one is slightly undersized I need you to take measurements of all those splines and give me an idea of what the average is. It is no use just having the ends at 4.41 if the middle is 4.35. So we want to get as much contact as possible and as little gap as possible. So if you give me a good idea of an average width that you've got left there where it's worn out slightly then I can supply you with a, a hub which has got splines in it which are 4.3, 4.2 or 4.1 so undersize and then you can hand fit it. The other thing that might be worth checking as I said earlier sometimes you find that fit in the back there measure that across there and it should be exactly one and a quarter inches but you can't get to it because it's inside the crankcase housing you can't get a micrometer on it so possibly just by trial and error if you find that is very tight trial and error turning out a little bit from the back of the hub there until you get a nice fit onto that In conclusion, let me just emphasise that I have attempted to make these so that they are off the shelf, easy to fit, and have had failures as a result of that, because these splines are often undersized. It is important to make sure that the flanks of these splines in here are a good mating fit with the splines on that shaft and I guarantee you that if you put it together with the slightest amount of play if there is the slightest chance of that being able to rattle backwards and forwards even a thousandth of an inch the thickness of a human hair it will fail don't do it send it back to me get an undersized one then you should have something that will last forever. Thanks for your patience. Good luck with your work. See you again soon.